So let me preface this video by saying, not a smart man, especially when it comes to boat repair and maintenance. Every bit of it is a struggle for me. I do enjoy videos though that uh, show somebody working to create order out of chaos. Uh, so I, I put this together kind of in that vein, it's my contribution to that genre. So my story begins with a nine-year-old leaking dripless shaft seal. Just saying dripless shaft seal will invoke the ire of many sailors because there is controversy about the best way to seal a stern tube, the place where the uh, propeller shaft comes from outside the boat to inside the boat. The traditional approach is the stuffing box, which compresses wax impregnated flax tape around the shaft. When it fails, it fails gradually. Dripless shaft seals use a spring to press two discs together. When they fail, they often fail catastrophically. I've had both systems over the years and can't say I definitively prefer one over the other, but I do keep a sealer sink shaft sock close by in case my seal should fail. These seals frequently leak when a boat is put back in the water after a haul out. A simple burping usually takes care of that. Mine was still leaking a slow trickle despite burping, cleaning the rotor disc, and gradually compressing the bellows more and more over time. The manufacturer of this seal recommends replacing the bellows, set screws, and hose clamps every six years. I had some damage and pitting on my rotor, so decided to replace the whole thing. The first step in replacing the shaft seal is to remove the shaft coupling. I removed the set screw but could not budge the coupling. I tried heating with a heat gun. These only go to about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe I would have had more luck using an acetylene torch which goes to 4,000 degrees. Some have had success icing the shaft and heating the coupling. I tried a pulley puller but it was no match for the frozen coupling. I made a puller from a one quarter inch steel plate. I worked it for days. I even attended a finance meeting by Zoom one morning while pulling wrenches in the bilge. Ultimately, my steel plate bent and the bolts broke without moving the coupling even a millimeter. Maybe a commercial puller would have worked, but I didn't have one then. I watched a lot of YouTube videos over those many days. There was one called Mother of All Shaft Coupling Battles that pretty much summarizes the struggle. It ends by cutting the coupling off with a grinder. My saga ends similarly, using a multi-tool with a carbide blade to cut the thing off. Vibration underway can be a sign of a failing cutlass or strut bearing. We really didn't have that much vibration, uh, but during a haul out in 2021, we were told that there was too much play uh, around the propeller shaft where it came through the strut and that we really should think about replacing that cutlass bearing. Now it's a year later, uh, the boat's on the hard. Uh, I don't have any plans to put it back on the hard for a few years. I've got the shaft coupling off, I'm replacing the dripless shaft seal, uh, I'm getting the propeller rebuilt and it's like, why not? You know, let's just do this whole thing and do the cutlass bearing. So in my mind, the cutlass bearing is a nightmare job that I really didn't want to tackle on my own. So I had our service department have a look and they said it's going to be a thousand bucks uh, to replace the cutlass bearing. I really dreaded that job. So I said, go ahead and do it. They got as far as removing the set screws and then the tech was injured on another boat later that day. And they were telling me it's going to be more than a month before they can get back to my cutlass bearing. So at that point, I started really investigating how am I going to do this cutlass bearing? We're working on removing our cutlass bearing right now. going at it with the hacksaw 
we had our plan and our neighbor on a boat who's soon sailing out of here, Claude, walked up and was like, ah, what are you doing? It seems like it's coming through. The washers are cupping, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. See the washers here? At that point, I felt like I might be able to do the cutlass bearing if I could get the propeller shaft out. Getting the shaft out posed a whole other set of problems, though. It would not clear the rudder. I thought about dropping the rudder or removing the strut. Some have lifted the engine and pulled it through forward, even with the boat in the water. Okay. That's Ultimately, I opted for an approach that did not require removing the shaft. This Strut Pro tool is expensive, but it costs less than half of what the marina wanted to do the job. Setting up the tool is pretty straightforward. I had a friend helping that day, and somehow we got out of sync turning the bolts that compressed the tool. The bearing did not budge, and the collets buckled. I went home agitated that day, feeling like a failure and not sure what I should do next. I mean, come on, there are people capable of accomplishing this task underwater with breath holding. <laughs> Strut Pro sent out replacement collets, but I could not get them to seat securely in the forward end of the bearing. Eventually, I reversed the setup and successfully pushed the bearing from the back to the front and then pulled out my new best friend, the multi-tool, to cut it off. You can see why the collets would not seat on the forward end of the bearing. The lesson here is to go slow, a quarter to a half turn on each bolt at a time. It was a simple matter to press the new bearing in with the Strut Pro. With the cutlass bearing done, it was time to start putting everything back together. The next decision was the shaft coupling. The most economical choice would have been a brass straight bore coupling that exactly replaced the one I had cut off. These couplings are best pressed on and fared in a propeller shop. So now I was back to the problem of needing to lift the engine to get the propeller shaft out. I opted for a simpler but more expensive solution, a split coupler. So installing the new dripless shaft seal ended up being very straightforward. The uh, split coupling was easy to put on and attach back to the uh, transmission. Um, you got the uh, old, the uh, refurbished propeller on with no problem and then it was so late in the year by the time I got all this done that, that baby blue bottom ablative paint. It was all they had at my West Marine store. So I still cringe when I see that um, just above the waterline. We got a late start to the sailing season um, that year, but we did make a memorable eight-day trip around the edge of the Chesapeake Bay, and I tried to chronicle that as best I could. I'll put a link to the first day of that trip in the description.